what needs to be done on a global scale to address the gender poverty imbalance. Well, joining me now from Monrovia is the former president of Liberia and Nobel Peace Laureate, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Madam President, you were the first ever female leader in the world's poorest continent. Why do you think it took until the 21st century for that to happen? Women all over the world have been subjected to stereotyping, valued mostly for their reproductive role and confined to the role of caring for children and for whom. Patriarchy has had its full weight on the backs of women before even histories began to be written. Women have therefore been denied full equity, equal opportunity, and justice. Over the years, we really can say that much has happened to change the status quo. Women have steadily broken the barriers to achieve rights and participation at all levels in society. Change is indeed coming. Uh, you say change is happening, perhaps change is not happening fast enough. But if the pace is upped for gender parity, how can that help beat poverty? Oh, well, clearly, if you have um, women with equal opportunity, and women have parity with men, you are going to see those changes that I mentioned. Uh, the changes in, in, um, in national laws, the changes in policies, you are going to see women who bring to leadership quite a different role. Uh, women who give other women's opportunities, who lift them up. Uh, this is how you, you, you're going to get this done. I mean, clearly, if you look at uh, some of the examples already that are before us, uh, you can see, but I also mentioned to you that uh, we have examples of uh, men, of men that have uh, been as very active and progressive in promoting uh, gender parity. And in those cases, look at the economy, uh, look at uh, how those economies grow, look at how, well, in, some, in many cases, uh, that also enhances the processes of democracy. Democracy enhances participation of women. Participation of women leads to changes that empower women. Empowered women with higher income levels then are able to move themselves out of the poverty trap. OK, so you're talking about leadership there and the role of women in the alleviation of poverty is a global issue and therefore perhaps requires a global response. Who should be leading that global response, do you think? That response has to be led by women and men in national architecture of authority in the global uh, architecture of leadership in institutions uh, that promote women leaders, that those that make decisions regarding women, it has to be a collective effort. All persons, women and men, in these positions of power and authority must lead the response. As I mentioned, through laws, through policy, they must address the issue of women poverty. Women groups, women partnership institutions must also continue with the strong advocacy that you see today, demanding an improvement in the environment for women and girls and an enhancement in the quality of their lives. Education, of course, is, is the big key uh, to empowerment and also to the alleviation of poverty. It's something you've spent a lot of your time on um, while you were president. What more can be done now? Education is the key to development. And there have been tremendous progress all over the world. The quality of education, particularly 
for the poorest nation has declined in large measures recently, perhaps due to reliance on social media for important information that would otherwise require evidence-based academic knowledge. We also say that national educational systems need improved programs for reading because we have found that again, with so many diversions to other means of obtaining information, uh, reading in schools at the level required for knowledge have also, have also declined. We need those systems that will emphasize digitization for today's technological age. Our youth in Africa, representing the largest percent of the population, need to also be supported, greater effort, so that they have become technological ready for, in a competitive world. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, many thanks to you for joining us for this special program.